Welcome back to the gamery. We're here on day two of Detective. Okay, so of these two, which one would you be more interested in? Maybe the fire. The fire, the fire guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so field work six fifteen. It, it'll be the last thing we do, right? Maybe we can risk an hour or so overtime. Okay, so field work. <laughs> oh wait, what is this arrow? Oh no no no! Oh. <laughs> this one we can flip over. <laughs> Two hours takes us to the end of the day. You have an appointment with Samuel Cropper, commanding officer of the firefighting operation in the small cafe opposite the park. You save a table and order coffee. After ten minutes, a tanned, broad-shouldered man in his fifties arrives. He throws his heavy rain-soaked coat on the chair. You invite him to sit down. As I mentioned over the phone, I'm interested in the fire at the house on Donview Street. A married couple died as a result of smoke inhalation, and their daughter disappeared. You were the commanding officer. Yes, we were watching a game. Our team was in the NBA Finals. It's hard to forget. All of Cleveland was stuck to their TV sets. Even the car thieves took a day off. The couple is said to have inhaled toxic gases without any foul play being suspected. That's what it looked like. There was no circumstantial evidence to dig deeper, and a couple weeks earlier, there were also some problems with the unit ventilation in the house of one of the neighbors, the Richards guy. His wife reported the problem. The fireplace company nearly went bankrupt after that series of events. Safe and Epic Fire, I think that's the name. They had a lot of problems. Never mind, that's just a coincidence. To sum up, a couple of days after the operation, we were informed that the case was classified as an unfortunate accident. The famous sports reporter Mary Cathla was sniffing around the case at the time. She even interviewed me, but I don't know if she eventually found anything interesting. What of it? Why do you ask? Have any new facts surfaced? It seems that the missing. Girl was found. Well, now finally some good news. She was murdered. <laughs> you say, getting up from the table. Here's my business card in case you remember something else. You add as you hand him the card. You thank him, pay, and leave the cafe. Ooh, I want to talk to this Mary Cathla. Oh, let's get. Oh, I didn't even look at the further leads. Yeah, she probably has good information. Contact the Safe and Epic Fire Company. I think that's what we gotta do next. But let's look up. But if you contact the company that went bankrupt, you think they'll tell us the real, like, down low what was going on? I don't know, but maybe we can get some leads. All right. We have her DNA. Criminal record. Arrested for trespassing on private property. Well, that's because she's a reporter, right? Arrested for stalking. Restraining order preventing communication with Tom Richards. Court order was filed by Melissa Richards. So she was digging around. Known sports journalist, author of several biographies of well-known athletes, including one about Tom Richards. Conversation. Okay, so that's field work. What, what did we have here? Headquarters. Dang it. Well... I don't know if we can go to overtime unless it's in field work. Is there anything with field work? Yeah, talking to the Mrs. Richards. Oh, her too. So Let's we can talk to Mary Cathla. Oh, I wanted to contact them too, but I think、um, Mary would know more stuff. So six eighteen, two hours. Oof, can't do anything else. No more overtime. We're at six, and we have. Too stressed. Mary Cathla agreed to meet you in one of the cafes downtown. You reach the location, and the journalist is already there, sitting with a coffee and working on her laptop. When you walk up, she smiles and closes the computer screen. Her long gray hair is tied in a ponytail. She is dressed in a sporty outfit. How may I help you? She asks. It's about Tom Richards' case. His neighbors had a fire in June 2015. Do you remember? Yes, his neighbors died during the game. A sad story. What can you tell me about Tom that I can't read from the police files or his testimonies? He is a very interesting man. As with any young basketball player, he had a glamorous life. He enjoyed the high society and was associated with the mayor and the city's wealth businessmen. He frequently surrounded himself with beautiful women, partying all day long, even though he had a wife. After the Cavaliers lost the finals, he changed. After the events of that day, he settled down and he no longer seemed to enjoy the same glamour. He still went to parties, but in a quieter way, and he always came with his wife. You know, what, I already, I, I. I think it's the wife. The wife. It's always the wife. 
And what kind of man is he today? He's the assistant coach of the junior team. He settled down. He is much less present in the media. Now is the time for his wife, Melissa. She's been the one in the spotlight ever since Tom's career ended. Did anything from that period catch your attention? Anything that seemed weird? Only how much the loss shook him. I remember that he didn't come out when the team thanked the fans after the game. A couple of days later, he told me in the interview that he was stuck in the VIP room and couldn't get out onto the field. No one saw him that day. He was so devastated. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we, already, we already have their names, right? I'm going in circles. Oh, so that is actually sketch. Why, why was he so shook? He was apparently stuck in the VIP room all day and no one saw him. That's why the further leads was whether he anyone could cooperate that he was at the game. Because of an injury. Like no one really saw that he was at the game, right? Can anyone cooperate that he was actually there? So they stated their neighbor, Mrs. Richards, got them tickets. They stated that unfortunately her husband did not oh. play in that game because of an injury. So they say it's because of an injury that he was stuck in the VIP room. Yeah, so how do we know he was actually there? Yeah, he didn't play in the game because of an injury. No one saw him that day. So he has no alibi, which is probably why... They're telling you to check the alibi. Okay, so when we start the next day, we'll be at the headquarters. So we can do this if you want. Okay. Boom. Bang. Chow. <laughs> we didn't use anything. Still haven't even used tokens. But we are at two of three stress, so we cannot... Well, it actually doesn't matter now. But I think once you go over... That's it? Or once you reach 4 p.m., like, that's it. <coughs> so our leads are to check the alibi of Tom Richards. It's very suspicious on that day of the finals. We can contact the fire company. Oh, they're both at headquarters. Let's do the alibi first. They're making him look very suspicious, like a little too suspicious. One hour. You sit in front of the computer and wonder how to find proof that Tom Richards was at the game on June 16, 2015. Cameras at the arena are the first clue, but after a short phone call to Quicken Loans Arena, it turns out they don't have records from two years back. The man suggests checking with the company handling the tickets. In the meantime, you connect the main computer to the game coverage shown on ABC to look for Richards in any of the frames. The second computer goes through all of the photos on Twitter from that day. Maybe a fan caught Richards on a photograph. You call Magnetic Security Solutions and without much hope, ask for the database of cards from 2015. The lady doesn't know. She puts you through to somebody else. He doesn't know either, but puts you through to somebody else. <laughs> Judging by the voice with every subsequent connection, it seems that you are talking to younger and younger employees. When you hear what sounds like a high school <laughs> kid, pick up the receiver you decide to hang up. <laughs> wow. Okay, and flip over i can dig it out you hear just before you click the button really we've got everything on the server what exactly are we looking for we're checking whether tom richards was at the quicken loans arena on june 16th 2015 okay i can do that says the voice in the receiver you hear tapping on the keyboard and after a couple of minutes you get your answer I have his record in the database, this Richards guy. He was a Cleveland Cavaliers player. Every player on the team has a card issued for the event. His card had never been activated, so officially he was not at the stadium that day. The Antares system also did not find him in any picture or frame. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Discard number 608 card from the deck. It is no longer available. Interrogation of Tom Richards. Yes. Interrogate him? Yes, we're already at headquarters. One hour. Yeah, it's still only 10 a.m. Get this solved before lunch. Tom Richards comes to the Antares headquarters pale as a ghost. The screen on the wall is flashing images. One screen displays rotating images from the crime scene. The other one shows photos from the accident. And yet another one shows photos of the 2015 NBA Finals. You begin the interrogation. You testified that on June 16, 2015, you were at the game in which your team played. Yes. We checked the electronic ticket records. There is no record of your presence at the stadium. We are not able to confirm your alibi. Could you tell us where were you on June 16, 2015? I was there. I left the card at home. 
They obviously let me in because everyone at the stadium knows me. What does it matter that there is no record of my card being checked in? <laughs> In June 2015, you forgot your card at the same time that there was a fire that killed Mr. and Mrs. Novak, and now you were late for work because of traffic at the same time that their daughter Susan Novak was killed. I didn't even know that. Wait. <laughs> When did we get that info? I know knew Susan. We were friends. She wrote to me the day before she died. She wanted to meet. Did anyone apart from you know about this? No, I don't think so. You don't think so. My wife sometimes goes through my phone. She's suspicious. Did you kill Susan Novak? We only had an affair. It was not a big deal. I liked her. I would never hurt her. I knew they had an affair. Yeah. So I think it's the wife. So we still have the action of investigate the wife. All right. Wow. We got that really early on. So six sixteen, and we have to move. <laughs> Car is slowly dying. <laughs> okay, so it's one hour. The house at six sixteen Don Yu Street is large, tidy, and makes a very good impression. When you walk up to the door, you hear a dog barking. You knock. The door is opened by a middle-aged woman wearing a sporty outfit. Next to her, a small dog bears its teeth. You explain that you are here to ask her a couple of questions related to the murder in the house next door. According to the information we received, you were not at home at the time of murder. You start the conversation while looking at the report you got from the police. After my husband left for work at the arena, I went for a run. I was back home after nine. So you didn't hear the shots? No. You didn't notice anything suspicious in the morning? No. It was a day like any other day. Did you run alone? Did anyone see you to confirm this? I run over there behind the house. She points to the back. We have a lot of space there, just fields, wildlife, mud, and snow. Come and see for yourself, she says, going to the window and moving the net curtain. Actually, on that day, I met Betty Boone from 609. She can confirm this. Does all this mean that I am a suspect? You don't have to worry. We are checking all the residents. Thank you for your cooperation. If you remember anything else, please contact me. You say as you hand her your business card. Ask if they have a gun in the house. Yes.、Mm, yes. Okay, we will use one of our tokens. Standing at the threshold and trying not to step on the dog who keeps getting under your feet, you ask one more question: Do you have a gun? I don't. What an odd idea. My husband does, though. Do you remember what model? Sig Sar P nine three eight. My husband brags about it all the time.、Hmm. By the way, the search history is gonna look really funky. <laughs> I'm thinking of guns and drugs. Oh, <laughs>、well, it's really small. They just want us to assume like she could have done it. Powerful, lightweight, all metal frame. Easy to handle pistol. My husband brags about it all. Why would he brag about a tiny gun? <laughs> This has got to be a lie. <laughs> It's so small and handy, Danny. I can carry it in my purse. <laughs> okay, what time is it? It is noon. Early. I want to check the the crime scene, the autopsy, and、oh. match the gun. This one. Yeah. This is gonna be like two hours. Okay, up two hours. Good, just enough time. The coroner's report is to be transferred to the police and the Antwerp agency in a few hours. But if you put some effort into it, you might get it earlier. At least the preliminary version. All you need to do is try. You reach the courthouse, go through the gate, and after a short conversation with the guards, go downstairs to the basement where Doctor Pine, an Antwerp consultant, has his office. You enter the cold, steel gray space. Pine has just finished printing the first version of the report. He hands you the file, but the expression on his face says there's nothing interesting there. More will be known after further tests, but that takes time. You sit on the chair and open the document. File at six o three. Oof. So weird. Oh, is that her? Yeah. The victim is a white female, age twenty-five to thirty, of slight. Body build, height five five, hair natural red, dyed dark blonde, eyes blue. The cause of death is an injury of the cardiac muscle as a result of a gunshot. The shot was made at close range, leaving clear traces of gunpowder on the victim's body and clothes. Death was instant. There are multiple signs of struggle, scratches, and torn hair on the body. Ooh. 
skin traces found beneath the fingernails of the victim. Yes. The time of death was between eight and nine. Isn't that when uh, Miss Missy was jogging here? Miss Missy. You know what I just connected to? Is the train ticket. Oh, so they did their little thing on the day of the finals, and then the next day she kills her. Let's add her prints, Susan Novak's fingerprints, and under the nails. What is it's it? It's thigh six seven five something. Oh, unknown. Unknown. This is the first DNA sample. We only have fingerprints. We have none from the Richards. Oh, the chair. So I think this chair was overturned in the altercation, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe this is the fingerprints we want. The only one that's incomplete. So I'm guessing this is our suspect right here. What about the DNA under the fingernails? Is the fingerprint signature different? It is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the bullet casing too. Oh, bullet case nine mm. So what was the the gun? What? gun oh. what bullet does it take oh yeah. 9 mm definitely so, yeah. they used the gun this gun was yeah. used we know is either mr or mrs well let's let's discuss the report yeah you close the file and look at pine anything else too soon this is just a preliminary report anything catch your eye anything you won't include in the report until it's confirmed with tests pine puts the victim's photographs on the table and points to some of them look the victim was defending herself, grappling. It was a struggle. If a strong man attacked her, there would be no struggle. She's a relatively slim girl. Ooh. Could the murderer be a woman? This is just a tentative statement, but yes, a woman or a man who at first did not want to hurt her and just held her down could be the murderer. It just escalated to a gunshot. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the last statement says did not want to hurt, hurt her. her. So... It could also be <laughs> Mr. Richards here. Okay. But why would you bring a gun if you didn't want to hurt someone? So I still think it's the wife. I think we can do one more thing. Why don't we question uh, Betty Boone? Betty Boone from 609. Wait, we have one of their statements already, right? Who's Betty Boone? There's Barbara. Let's go question 609. <laughs> <laughs> We go one hour over time. You end immediately or can yeah, you read the fine. card? We're not entirely sure if uh, we're doing this wrong, then our apologies. <laughs> we're just going to to read it. Oh, the, the Boone. Boone family. The Boone family lives at 609 Donview Street. Despite the fact that the weather is rather discouraging, Mrs. Boone is working in front of the house. May I have a moment of your time, ma'am? I already talked to the police. I didn't hear the gunshots. I know nothing. I didn't know the people who lived there. I moved in here two years ago and I already told you everything. I know nothing. And on February 12th, did you see anything strange or unusual? No, nothing. I told you. It was a day like any other. Unless you think it's strange that the crazy lady, Melissa Richards, started jogging again, she says, shaking her head. I met her in the morning along my route as I was going back. She was completely out of breath. She creates the image of a healthy type fit and all, but she was totally red in the face. Crazy, that's all. What do you mean by crazy? I mean that she's crazy. I'm telling you. My brother-in-law recognized her when she was doing some tests. He works at Metro Health in the psychiatric ward. Crazy. I'm telling you. That last car didn't really tell us anything. Well, she was like all flustered and not from a light jog. And that's it. Okay, final report time. What I still don't feel good about is we didn't use any of the DNA. You should finish your game first. Are you ready now to see and answer questions for a case suburbia? Yes. <laughs> okay, what was the motive for Susan Novak's murder? Jealousy. I think it's jealousy. Okay. Who murdered Susan Novak? Melissa. Oh, Mary's a suspect? <laughs> What was the cause of death of Mr. and Mrs. Novak? Failure of ventilation system. Yes. 
right? Yeah, I mean, I guess oh, we the don't murderers know tampering. Tamper. I think it's failure because there's multiple. That's the one thing we didn't check. We didn't, we didn't contact check. the fireplace. No, but the second person that reported a ventilation issue was actually Richards too. A lot of people were experiencing issues. But the two people were mainly the、um, Novaks and also Richards. So it could be that the Richards said that just to cover up, saying like, "Oh, it's a common issue." But it did say that that company was going bankrupt because of a lot of issues. Yeah. So I think it、It's、was、really、a common problem. Yeah. Where was Susan Novak on the day of her parents' death? Oh, with Tom, right? That was the finals. Yeah. Okay. Oh,、Three. dang it! I think we're gonna lose points for this. Okay, ready?、Mm -hmm. Yeah, we、Salt. got everything right. Oh, except, we got everything right. <laughs> except for the three stress. Roland examines your report. This is a lot of work you've done here, and you only started two days ago. Thank you for your hard work. Let's go through all of the most important questions I wanted you to answer. First, what was the motive for Susan Novak's murder? You think it was the jealousy about an affair from the past? That sounds about right. I think it was an affair that happened in the past. It was a crime of passion, a revenge, or rather, to prevent that old affair from happening ever again. So the most important question remains: Who killed Susan Novak? You believe it was Melissa Richards. That's the most plausible theory. I believe Susan Novak was murdered by Melissa Richards. Melissa was jealous. Her husband cheated on her with the younger girl next door. It is also entirely possible that this led to the death of Bob and Jenny Novak. I believe Susan was the intended target back then, but ironically enough, she was on a date with Tom Richards that night. Overall, you did a superb job, detectives. I am proud of you. I will recommend you for all of the future cases. Of course, this is only the beginning.、I I will now notify the police. They will arrest our suspect. There will be a trial, and thanks to you, a satisfying sentence. But let's just leave that to the prosecutors, shall we? Okay, so we missed something. There's a, another tab that says additional questions. Ah, yeah.、See? Yeah. So it was intentional. All right. Well, there you go. We got nine out of twelve. We solved this case. If you like our content, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you again in the game ring.